thought I would end this week's posts with a bit of a wrap-up around several bits of recent Harry and Meghan news, or what we can call bits of Harry and Meghan adjacent news. Anyway, it's all of a piece when you get into it, so let's do that. First up, there's a little reported on item that Harry and Meghan snubbed an elderly neighbor when they first moved to Montecito. The neighbor, Navy veteran Frank McGinnity, wrote about the snub in a new chapter of his memoir, Get Off Your Street. Seems Mr. McGinnity had made a series of films about the mudslides that had devastated the Montecito area before the former royals took up residence there and wanted to drop off CDs of the films as a welcome gift. But he couldn't make it past the Harkle's security who informed Mr. McGinnity that Meghan and Harry weren't interested in his films. This doesn't surprise me. Mr. McGinty is elderly, 88 years old as a matter of fact. He is not an entertainment biz mover and shaker, and the subject of mudslides, while critical, isn't glamorous. Meghan, one can assume from her various attempts at fashion, likes to think of herself as glamorous and likely thought she had better things to do than talk to some 88-year-old nobody about mud. One person Megan did want to talk to, however, was Gavin Newsom, the dashing, popular, youngish, he's 55, Democratic governor of California. And she wanted to talk to Governor Newsom so very badly that she rather made a pest of herself. According to reports, Megan was such a pest that the governor ended up instructing his staff not to put Megan through to him and blocking her on his own cell phone. What did Megan want to talk with the governor about so desperately? Well, that has to do with Diane Feinstein, the senior senator from California. She is likely soon to resign her seat before her term ends, and the governor will appoint her replacement. Meghan Markle wants Diane Feinstein's seat. Meghan Markle wants Governor Newsom to appoint her as Diane Feinstein's successor. Meghan Markle, whose biggest career achievement was to be part of an ensemble cast on a little-watched Canadian cable TV show, thought she ought to be a United States Senator. Meghan Markle is delusional enough to believe that. Because she married well, she ought to be given a place in the greatest deliberative body in the United States. She is delusional enough to believe that Gavin Newsom would make himself a laughingstock by appointing her to represent California. California, the state with a GDP larger than the whole country of France, represented by a cable TV actress and failed royal. Meghan Markle married into the title of Duchess and flaunts that title, though she has no connection any longer to actually doing the work of a Duchess. She got hundreds of millions of dollars from the likes of Spotify and Netflix on the back of her marriage and the cachet of her title, and did so little work for that Spotify fired her, and Netflix is likely to do the same because she isn't doing the work of producing content for that company either. Now she wants the governor of California to give her the title of senator, so she can flaunt that title too and not do the work of this job either. Some folks on the right are inevitably going to try to pin these latest reports from Montecito on Meghan and Harry being too woke. The right's misuse of the word woke is a subject I've railed about before, but you can watch that video next if you'd like. I'll link it. But the bottom line is that someone, somewhere, is going to pin Meghan's deplorable behaviors on what she presents as her politics. Well, let me tell you, there is nothing woke about being rude to an elderly man. If rudeness was a woke characteristic, then there would be no place for Donald Trump in the MAGA universe. I mean, the man is so asleep when it comes to social justice, he might as well be in a coma. If deciding you can be a high-ranking politician with absolutely no experience in governing were a woke thing, then Donald Trump would never have come down that cursed golden escalator. Let me say one more thing about woke before I close. There is a saying on the right, go woke, go broke, meaning that the right wants you to believe that what it defines as woke doesn't sell. Go woke, go broke is simply one of the silliest phrases ever coined, and the people that say it are flaunting their ignorance as efficiently as Meghan Markle flaunts her royal title. 
There is a letter titled Dear Red States that originated some 25 years ago, and it neatly sums up the differences in the quality of life between red states and blue states, that is, between MAGA strongholds and woke America. Some of the references in it are dated, but it's still relevant, and I've linked it in the description below. Also linked in the description is a tirade by Bill Maher, in which he presents the breakdown of the success of liberal policies on the economics of blue states and the failure of conservative policies in red states. In a nutshell, however, just know that it is the blue states contributing way, way more to the federal government than the red states do, and bluntly subsidizing the red states. According to the Washington Post, nine of the ten states that sent the most to the federal government per person voted for Biden in 2020. Nine of the ten states that sent the least voted for Trump. So yeah, go woke, go broke. Horse shit. Here's a fun example of how ridiculous this saying is. The Barbie movie that the right is currently losing its collective mind over? It grossed $155 million just domestically in its opening weekend. So if you really want to validate the idea of go woke, go broke, I think you need to go ask Barbie about what's selling in the marketplace. Anyway, leave Meghan Markle's purported politics out of it when you decide to critique her. It's her behavior that's the problem. Being woke is just fine. Pestering the governor of California to make you a U.S. senator when the biggest thing you've done with your life is marry a U.K. prince is just... It, it's bad form. If you like what we're doing here at The Authentic, give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when a new video makes its debut. And think about leaving a comment, too. We love to read what you have to say. Thank you for watching.